What's up, everyone? I'm Katherine Rudder, and you're listening to Life in the Fast Chain. On this episode, we talk about Corda Settler. So I have the dream team behind the scenes of the Settler here. Todd McDonald, David Nichol, and Roger Willis are all on to talk about what it is and why it's important. Enjoy. Todd is here with me in the London studio. How are you doing today? Hello, Catherine. I'm doing great. We have two other people in the studio. It's very um, exciting. Yeah, very exciting. Guys, newbies, introduce yourselves. Roger Willis. All right, that was lame. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You're not being investigated, Roger. It's a podcast. You're supposed podcast. to talk. And, and I must admit, I'm quite nervous about doing this. Yes. So you, you gotta, okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll, okay, we'll, we'll help you through it. Don't yes. worry about Thank it. Thank you. Dave. Hi, guys. It's David Nichol. Oh, wow, that was Oh, my God, cool. why do we have these people on the podcast? Let me, let me, talk. Catherine, let me start over. Okay, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So um, we have R3's digital asset team here today, which is very exciting. Um, yes, it is. It's, a, it's the team of three, and we also just confirmed the it's the handsomest team in R3 as well, so it's <laughs> yes, great. Yes, yes. Um, so uh, been in London this week. It's been uh, a lot of fun to be here. Yeah. Um, and you brought us on to talk about my band, right? Yes, okay. yes, I did, actually. And I can confirm, if anyone has listened to all the other uh, episodes, Todd and I had a little banter about the fact that I had missed one of his performances. And he's a drummer, mm-hmm. and he was amazing. Yes, so we did have another gig mm-hmm. on, uh, earlier this week, and it was uh, it was epic. It was amazing. Yes. Um, but I... I mean, maybe we're not going to be talking about it too much. We'll 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 tweet out some videos later. Oh, you know, no, 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 I am. I am going to send out a. On the day we're recording, it's Friday. I'm going to do a TGIF thing with the band. Yeah. Thank you very much. Because I mean, there's should... been so much demand for that. So I great. know. Yeah, you guys should go on tour. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We'll see. <laughs> uh, but also, uh, also this week, uh, been here. We were very uh, excited and proud to release uh, Court of Settler. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, yeah, he I, speaks. I, yes, I wrote a, I wrote a thing about it, but it was quite unfair for me actually to write a thing about it because these guys were the ones that that uh, drove this to reality and built it, and can speak much more eloquently um, yeah. than I can on it. Hopefully, if Roger, I don't know if the, that's uh, I don't know if that's true. I think you're all very equally qualified yeah. and um, handsome. But thank you. <laughs> so okay, let's talk a little bit about it because we have resources online. But tell me basically, what is the Court of Settler? Cool. So the Corda Settler is, um, it's a Cord app. It's mm-hmm. an application on Corda. We released it um, open source, actually. So it's available to anyone. Um, and it allows someone who's transacting on Corda to settle an obligation on any other payments rail. Um, so that's, if, if Roger and I are, are buying a coffee um, and, and I want to pay for that coffee, um, I can create an obligation on Corda and then um, settle that obligation, basically um, extinguish it uh, by paying over any payment method. Um, cool. The first iteration, the first integration that we uh, that we built, and by we I really mean Roger, um, was with the uh, with was with XRP, um, and Roger can talk more about uh, more about how that worked. Um, but yeah, we're really excited. Yeah. So if you think about uh, very simply, what we're trying to accomplish is overall, like in the in the in so the overall in the blockchain space, there's a few things that people are trying to accomplish. <clears throat> the main thing that everyone wants is utility today, right? So we want to get live. We want we want to have the ability to actually start conducting real business using this technology. We've been really uh, fortunate to see a lot of these, I guess, asset networks um, come online. Earlier uh, earlier this week, we had a uh, £30 million transaction on the uh, Lendercom business network on Corda, which is uh, from Finastra with, uh, with NatWest. So there's these assets that are starting to trade. But what those assets need, they need a way to settle, and they need payment to be made on the back of that. Uh, so settlers are really uh, sort of beautifully simple way to do that. Um, on the post that I wrote, I use an analogy which I kind of stretched to uh, within an inch of its life, but uh, if you think of sort of the eBay and PayPal uh, analogy where um, you, know, you have assets that want to be traded on something like an eBay marketplace, mm-hmm. um, much like uh, in our case in Corda, these are, these are scarce digital assets, whether they're, they're loans or invoices um, or derivatives, uh, and there needs to be some a payment or a settlement that if I send you the asset, you're going to pay me some money. Um, yeah. Because if I'm if I'm selling you you know this fine china set and you don't give me the you know 125 dollars that you paid for it, uh, I'd be pretty bummed out. Yeah. So really, what Settler is is it's it's not the PayPal actually. Settler allows you to integrate to a PayPal type uh, settlement rail or really any rail that just has to tick a few boxes, which which uh, Roger can describe better. Um, but the biggest thing for us is it's we wanted to put it out there so that our customers and our ecosystem can start 
using it today and start transacting today. Mm -hmm. um, and over the coming months, or, we're going to be rolling out a lot more uh, integrations. And in we look forward to the community especially yeah. to pick this up. Yeah, Roger. So talk a little bit about the technical stuff. The stuff I don't understand. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really simple. It's, it's super simple. It's, it's, not re it's, it's not that complicated at all. It's about two and a half thousand lines of code, and it's really huh. interoperability at its best. Right? Oh, yeah. very good. Yeah. 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 That's all it is. It's interoperability between two ledgers. Now, mostly when people talk about blockchain interrupt, they're talking about, say, I don't know, uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum interoperability or Corda and Bitcoin interoperability. But really, what we're... Well, I, I don't care whether the other sides of blockchain or not, right? We're, we're looking to uh, integrate with uh, any ledger, whether it's uh, the, the Bank of England's uh, RTGS ledger or whether it's PayPal. Indeed, Todd mentioned PayPal before. So really, what, what I've tried to do is come up with a, an abstraction or a design pattern that allows you to uh, settle on uh, any other rail. Mm -hmm. And it's super simple. The way it works is that uh, you submit a payment uh, on the other rail and you get back a payment reference and then there's a, and, and that's done via an API endpoint and then there's another endpoint that allows you to check to see whether the beneficiary received the payment. Now that's the super important thing. You can, you, this only works uh, when you get a signature back from this endpoint to say that the beneficiary received the payment. So that's okay. the crucial thing here. Mm. Okay. I think I get it. You, yeah? Wow. <laughs> no. No? <laughs> no, I do, I do. Because we were, I mean, I've helped with some small things, obviously. I've had, like, the littlest part of, of this whole project. But, so, I've, when I was editing, editing the videos, I was like, if I don't understand this by the end of this, I'm, I'm going to die. <laughs> 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 so, um, yeah, and also everyone's so excited about it. Like, the yeah. social universe mm -hmm. is going crazy. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and yeah. I, I think that's it. Well, it's a testament to this because there's... Uh, it's been it's been gratifying to see. So we're, we've gotten a ton of inbound over the last couple of days, uh, and I think one of the things we mentioned before is that we uh, we started with the XRP ledger integration. Um, there's we were already started to get inbound on other other rails um, that folks are interested in, uh, whether whether these are more in the traditional side. You can think of uh, you know, traditional um, payment rails, but also you know we've started to have people ask us, can we do this? With ERC twenty tokens, yeah. about Bitcoin. Um, so there's, you know, for us, we're excited to see what other folks can be doing. And one of the, we just got out of our weekly meeting about what we're going to be doing next, Ooh. which is always fun. Ooh, I would love to know. I know we can't talk about it probably because you're working on it, but no, that's fine. We will talk about it. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool. What yeah. are you doing next? <laughs> Default to open. Yeah. So, but but a, but a big part of what we want to do next is we're going. We have uh, a bit of a roadmap on on some of the other payment rails that, that we at R3 would like to try and drive integrations to yeah. uh, because of uh, the demand that we're seeing in the market. Yeah. But we're also going to be doing work to to make it as easy as possible for others to pick this up and start uh, make, making their own integrations. And, and this is from, because uh, we're starting, as I mentioned, we've had interest from our you know our large SI partners, but also we had, we had inbound mm -hmm. from students at MIT. They wanted to pick this up and, and do fun stuff with it. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, that means you have to write documentation, Todd. Yeah, get back to your Jira board. Your favorite, yeah. your favorite task, Roger. <laughs> yes. And that was the last we ever heard from Roger. <laughs> oh, that's sad. No, uh, but we're definitely trying to make it as easy as possible for other people to work on this as well. That's yeah. the beauty of open source code, is that people can just take this and do the same thing for their favorite payment rail. Yeah. Um, so that's why Roger's documentation is so important. It will be mm -hmm. more of a, a guide for um, for the developers of the world to, to take this and run with it and um, just build those little small integration points that, that Roger mentioned. Mm. Cool. Yeah, I like the open source community a lot. Like everyone's helping each other out. Yeah. So and so Roger has been, had, had, how many jobs have you had at R3 now? Three or four different ones? Yeah, DevRel. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I worked as basically Rich's personal assistant for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> My gosh. Yeah. That must have been miserable. Uh, yeah, it was all right. Um, and then, I, actually, I worked for you, Todd. Yeah, I was waiting yeah. for it. Uh, yeah. yeah, I did hire you. You, know, you forgot that. Yeah, I forgot. Uh, yeah. No, no, no. I forgot <laughs> right, too. Right, right, right. no, the, 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 he did hire you, too. Yeah, this is true. This is true. No, the, the product team that doesn't exist anymore is was the best team. Yes, until this team. Until this team, of course. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's been it's been great uh, great work with Roger the last couple of years. But also, I think since since he's had these different roles, uh, he's a developer. He's a coder. He wants to on it, like what's great working with Roger. He wants to get shit done. Yeah. And uh, and ship it. So that's a, we're really excited for that. But also since he spent so much time in the community, especially on the dev role side. Yeah. And also you know a fair bit of time you know on the crypto side too. And, and oh yeah, true. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I know it's a uh, crypto is not having the best. Uh, 
best time of it right now. But uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Rub our eyes. No. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> wow. <Yeah. laughs> out. Uh, yeah. What can't he do? Yeah, but I think it's. Um, I, I do actually think it was really cool that we were able to start with a cryptocurrency. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. It's very hip. Is it? Very yeah. hip. Yeah. Uh, exactly. You gotta be careful. Know. That's all brand. <laughs> it's off. Yeah. It's sort of. It's kind of like. Uh, uh, a bit, we've been, you, you don't want to try to be hip, because then it's like, you know, wearing dad yeah. jeans or something. Yeah. I feel like you always try to be hip. Me? <laughs> We're fighting again, officially. <laughs> it's bad news when the, when the drummer is trying to be hip. Uh, it, it just has to happen. Oh, no, I'm going to be in trouble. Okay, so let's change the topic. David, tell us a little bit about your history. We talked a little bit about Roger. About my history, great. Yeah, well, um, right. there was life before Roger, and there was now life after Roger. <laughs> Back to Roger. <laughs> no, um, so funny. I joined R3 last year, about a year and a month ago, um, and it has been awesome. Yeah. Uh, I was at a bigger, slower company before then. Mm -hmm. um, still working on fintech stuff, but um, usually working on more. Did it rhyme with Shmai BM? It did. <laughs> <laughs> it did. Okay. Uh, good choice. Um, um, anyways, what do you yeah. like? What's your favorite thing about working with me? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. What's your favorite thing about my favorite thing you? is is sending you uh, video edits uh, five minutes before they're due. Oh yeah, yeah, that's my that, most favorite that is, thing about. Working that, that's my favorite thing. <laughs> okay, okay, cool. Um, so um, I started at R three working on uh, trade finance and um, and a, a cross border payments project as a project manager, cool. and um, quickly realized that there's a lot of important stuff to do in cash settlement specifically. And that's what Todd was talking about before, which is basically all of these people were saying, we're about to go live. How are we going to settle these transactions? How are we going to pay for stuff? Um, yeah. So that's where we've been working really hard for the last uh, last year or so on um, helping people do that. And to be fair, for a while, we prioritized movement of value on Ledger, cash mm -hmm. on Ledger, uh, or a cash-like asset on Ledger. And um, I, I think it's really exciting that actually one of the things that's gotten most of the uh, traction in, in the community has been something that's off ledger. It's really a, it's a simple tool, but um, yeah. It, yeah, it helps us get it done. Yes, and also in speaking about my quest to make things hip. Um, I'm so yeah, I, don't, I won't forget. Uh, so so Dave and Roger had spent uh, a, a lot of time and put a lot of effort around um, this cash on ledger concept, which which we have open sourced a, f a few months back, which was one of our previous announcements. And this is as you can hopefully folks can can tell. About once a month, we're trying to put some some things out there that mm -hmm. can uh, really move the needle uh, for the quarter community. Uh, so that work is feeding into all the things that we are continuing to do when it comes to digital assets and tokens. So putting a more of a hip spin on what these guys are doing before <laughs> token up and bro down. Um, but <laughs> this is going to continue. Uh, so we had so <laughs> so we start. We wanted to put out some definitions. We've done that. We wanted to open source the cash issuer work, which these guys worked on, which we did, did a few months back. Uh, the Court of Settler, which has been, really, it's been an idea within R3 for two years, but someone mm -hmm. yeah. exhumed a wiki page from early 2017 where we first were started talking about it. Really? So that, we're really excited to put that out there. Yeah. And Kudos to Adam Fergal, by the way. That is true. Shout yeah. out to Adam. Um, mm -hmm. And then, so next, I'm saying this out loud just to put these guys on the spot because they have to deliver after I say it in public, is uh, our token SDK is coming out. Oh, yeah, that's going to be great. Yeah, it's, it's going to be great. great. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? It's so convincing. Roger. Token SDK. Well, um, SDK stands for software. Steak. Steak. No, not SDK, no. not the no. restaurant. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not a restaurant. It's a software development toolkit. So okay. um, think uh, ERC20 on Ethereum, but the same principle on Corda. So we're going to release a whole bunch of code that allows um, Corda developers, users of Corda, to easily create their own tokens, transfer those tokens, redeem those tokens, do whatever they want with those tokens, obviously within the law. Um, and um, yeah, it's, it's going to be great. Uh, cool. as, as well, we're going to be releasing loads of documentation, videos, yeah. tutorials, all mm. that stuff. So yeah. it's just going to, it's really enabling people, making it super easy to use Corda. Yeah. Cool. We've seen tons of interest from people uh, who want to issue security tokens uh, on Corda. They are, um, they're finding that the current platforms out there um, are, are not really fit for purpose. Mm. Um, they don't have the privacy or the scalability needed, uh, especially when you're dealing with, with the regulations that Roger's referring to. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we're a little biased, but we happen to think the court is the best place for, to issue security tokens. And the only thing that's missing is the tools for the developers to be able to do it. Yeah. So that's what, that's what Roger's going to be spending a lot of time on. Yeah, I mean, mainly we're giving him the token SDK to do so he doesn't keep obsessing about doing a Satoshi-style coin on Corda. <laughs> which, is what, which is what he really wants to do. Yeah, that would be amazing. It would be really cool, right? Just quarter coin. It would be super hip as well. It would be uh, the best thing. <laughs> so hip. So uh, hip. 
<laughs> so who would who would mine quarter coins? Would you mine quarter coin? Nah, no, no, um, because I'm old. Yeah, this is a slippery slippery slope though. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Dad. Oh, he looks so defeated. <laughs> it's okay, Roger. <laughs> it's all gonna be okay. Okay, so before I let you guys leave, tell me one fun fact about yourself. And we know Roger's fun fact is er, Roger. Todd's fun fact is that he's in a band. Isn't that, that is true. One? Fun and awesome and amazing. Fun and awesome. It's so yeah. And hip. impressive. So hip. Yes, and very hip. Very impressive. Okay. Go, David. Um, so this year, I sadly missed Corticon. What? Yeah, that, that's a not very fun fact. Um, and the that's reason, devastating. Yeah. It was so fun. I, I know. I saw the, I saw the videos. <laughs> you, you, great, great kudos to the social marketing team. Woohoo! Thank right? you! I, I saw what I was missing every single day. Um, uh, the reason I missed Corticon is because I was riding across Scotland. Oh, okay. um, with my dad, and uh, it was um, one of the most awesome and um, and exhausting and arguably stupid things to do. Riding a hundred miles a day instead of mm. spending time. What do you mean riding? Are you on a bike? My favorite people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. on a bike. On a bike. Wow. Yeah, That's and, really and this, cool. the crazy thing is, you pay money to do this. No one's <laughs> making you do it. Yeah. So anyway. Oh, that is a, that's a fun fact. That's a fun fact. I'll take it. Okay, Roger. <laughs> on to you. I get bad hangovers. <laughs> <laughs> so, Everyone in the office has seen. No, I'm just joking. No, it's true. They have seen. Um, I don't know what it is. It's not the alcohol. It can't be the alcohol. <laughs> it cannot be that. It has to be something. It has happened twice this year. Once. Oh. Once. Twice this yeah, year? Twice. Roger, you need to have more fun. That's that, not bad. That comment might have been more out of bounds than the Satoshi coin thing. Oh, oh my gosh. That's amazing. <laughs> That's why we can edit it out. No. Mm, no, no. no. Roger, it's live a, stream. It's, it's, a, it's a, an immutable podcast. Oh, yeah. you yeah. didn't tell me that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but bad hangers. That's a really, that was, oh, that's a good one. It makes you human. Roger, so uh, I'll, I'll give what? It, I'm what? I'll, <laughs> a, a different fun fact for, for Roger is that uh, Roger was a uh, he was um, in a startup before he he joined R three his own his own startup. Yeah. Yeah, and it was a uh, he was he was building something that was inspired by. Ian Grigg. Oh yeah, Ian. Good old yeah. Ian. Yeah. And so Ian Grigg was one of the initial architects for Corda. So that was sort of the genesis of all this coming together. Wow. That's, yeah. a, that's a more work safe fun fact. It was a little yeah. safer, yeah. 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 Whatever, we'll keep both. Mm -hmm. I like them both. All right. Thank you so much for joining me in the studio. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. To learn more about Corda Settler, go to r3.com and read the press release. We have two YouTube videos out there as well explaining what the Settler is. So one is a code review by Roger Willis and another is a non-technical explainer video by David Nichol. Todd McDonald also wrote a great blog post about it, so read that. Stay tuned to learn more about the Settler in the weeks and months to come. Um, I've also linked all of this in the bio. Be sure to follow everyone on Twitter for the latest from them. I'm Brett and Rudder. Uh, I know. Uh, let me know what you think about the podcast and stay tuned for more episodes on your favorite podcast app. <laughs>